Hi, I'm John Leonard with ATAC Tutoring, and I'm here to show you how to solve LSAT logic games. Now, the LSAT logic game section, also known as analytical reasoning section, is often the most feared portion of the LSAT because it's so abstract and the problems can seem so difficult to solve at first, but I'm going to show you how you can diagram them to solve them quickly and accurately. So let's take a look at this example problem, which is a sequencing problem. So we have five race car drivers, Alan, Bob, Chris, Don, and Eugene, enter into a contest that consists of six races. And here are a few constraints based upon this. Bob always finishes ahead of Chris, Alan finishes either first or last, Eugene finishes either first or last, and there are no ties. So this is the basic outline of the LSAT logic game. What comes next are a series of questions pertaining to this. So the first question we're going to look at is this one. So if Eugene finishes two places ahead of Chris in the first race, all of the following will be true except Bob is ahead of Don, Chris is two places ahead of Alan, Don is fourth, Bob is immediately behind Eugene, or Chris is ahead of Bob. So let's take a look at the board over here and we'll go ahead and try diagramming this problem. So I've numbered the board 1 through 5 because the, play, the racers can come in from either 1st to 5th place. And so based upon the constraints of the original outline, we know that Alan either finishes 1st or last, and also that Eugene either finishes 1st or last. So this is how I like to represent that. So I've got an A slash E both in spot 1 and in spot 5 to let you know that these spots are going to be taken up by either Alan or Eugene and that the other three racers are going to fill in spots 2, 3, and 4. So let's take one more look at that question. So if Eugene finishes two places ahead of Chris in the first race, so let's take a look at what that means. So if Eugene finishes two places ahead of Chris, that means Eugene has to come in the first place here, not in the last place. So I'm going to just circle the E here, cross out the A, circle the, the A here, and cross out the E. And so Eugene comes in two places ahead of Chris, so Chris is in spot three. But going back to the original list of constraints, we also know that Bob always has to come before Chris. So here's Bob in spot number two, and then there's only one spot left for Dan, and that's spot number four. So now E, B, C, D, A, we know where all the racers come in, and so now we can just take a look at the original problem, and we can select the right answer. So problem, the answers they give you are Bob is always ahead of Don, which that one is true, so we're going to not, so that's going to be wrong as far as we're concerned. Chris is two places ahead of Alan, which is true, so this is asking which of the all the following are true except, so A and B we cross out, Don is fourth, also correct, so we don't select that one. Bob is immediately behind Eugene, again that's correct, so we're not going to select it. And then the last one is Chris is ahead of Bob which is the only one of these that is untrue, as we can see from the diagram. Here's Chris, here's Bob. So there we go, so we've solved it. Easy the answer for that one. So now let's take a look at the next problem. If Don finishes third in the third race, which of the following must be true of that race? A, Alan finishes first, B, Eugene finishes first, C, Bob finishes second, D, Chris finishes second, or E, Alan finishes fifth. Well, let's take a look and try diagramming this. So again, I'm going to do the A slash E thing in spots 1 and 5. And now we know that Don finishes third. So if Don finishes third, we don't really know which of these is Alan and which one's Eugene, but we don't really need that. But what we do know is that Bob is going to come in spot 2, and then Chris is going to come in spot four because Bob always has to come before Chris um, according to the constraints of the original problem. So now we have Alan or Eugene, Bob, Don, Chris, and then Alan or Eugene. And as it turns out, that's actually all we need to solve the problem. So let's take a look at the potential answers here. Alan finishes first. We don't know that for sure, so we can't select that one. Eugene finishes first. We don't know that for sure, so again, we cannot select that one. Bob finishes second. That is true, so that's our answer, but let's just take a look at the other two. Chris finishes second, not true. Alan finishes fifth. Again, we can't be sure of that. 
So that's how you solve an example of two problems that you might be given on the LSAT analytical reasoning section. Uh, generally, the LSAT will give you uh, an outline and then a series of about five questions that you have to answer based upon that. And diagramming it, like I just showed you, can help you tremendously.